Hi everyone, this is Fabi here and in today's video we'll be discussing the differences between being an embedded software engineer and a software engineer. Longtime viewers on my channel will already know this as I already have multiple videos discussing this in my Embedded Systems Explained series which you can check out after watching this video. But to give you a quick idea, embedded software engineers program the microcontrollers inside the embedded systems of the devices we use on a daily basis. This could be the washing machine, the microwave oven, various systems in our cars, even safety critical ones, small accessories such as the AirPods, to even things in the medical field. On the other hand, software engineers program things like smartphone apps, computer apps, or web apps. So think of things like your Spotify's, your Netflix's, but also server-side applications which control a lot of things that we use every day as well. A quick example would be all of the payments we make through our cards at different merchants. Knowing this, let's delve into what these differences mean and how the skill set required for each engineer differs right after a quick message from today's sponsor PCBWay which specializes in PCBs just like this one which is something that embedded software engineers will work really closely with throughout their careers. Special thanks to PCBWay which is a one-stop shop for all your PCB prototyping, 3D printing and CNC machining needs. Click the link in the description to buy 5 PCBs with 2-4 to four day shipping for under $30. If you have an idea for a new product or already have everything developed, PCBWay offers complete manufacturing services from producing PCBs, buying the necessary parts, assembling the PCBs, CNC machining, 3D printing, even injection molding, all the way to final assembly. No matter how complex your project is, PCBWay has got you covered. Okay, so looking at what each engineer programs is a pretty good way of telling what the necessary skill set is. Given that embedded software engineers write code specifically for a platform or for a microcontroller, it's obvious that they have pretty in-depth knowledge of that microcontroller. Very frequently, being an embedded software engineer means writing drivers for your microcontroller peripherals directly, so things like drivers for the serial communication, drivers for the analog to digital converter, for timers, etc. This involves correctly configuring the registers of said peripherals, which means that programmers have to work very closely with the datasheet to get this right. What this also means is that the software, especially at the driver level, is not really portable. So if the hardware changes, there will most likely also be necessary changes to be made in the software. In case of software engineers, the code that they write is mostly made to run on three different categories of hardware. These would be phones or tablets, laptops or desktops, and finally, servers. What all three categories share is the fact that they all have an operating system acting as an intermediary between the hardware and the applications that run on top. Because of this, software engineers mostly don't have to deal with the hardware that runs their application. Another aspect of being an embedded software engineer has to do with managing the system resources that are available efficiently. Unlike phones, PCs or servers, embedded systems are usually quite limited on resources such as RAM, program memory or processing power. Not only this, but sometimes peripherals which your software depends on ends up not being available on certain platforms or certain microcontrollers. Let's say you've already written a software that makes use of the real-time module inside a microcontroller, but then you have to port this software over to another microcontroller that doesn't have this peripheral implemented. In this case, you would either have to implement the real-time clock through software, through let's say interrupts every second and then building a calendar going from there, or integrate a real-time clock chip into your hardware, but in this case, you'd also have to write the driver to communicate with this chip. In the case of software engineers, resources nowadays are plentiful on all three categories of hardware, and if a peripheral like a DVD drive is missing or is of another model, the operating system would deal with this and it will all be transparent to the application running on top. Given some of the applications of embedded systems, like in the automotive field, 
aviation, or even in things like elevators, software written for these is often safety critical and also must run in real time. Safety critical means that if something were to go wrong with the software, human lives could be put to risk. If, for example, the microcontroller that handles the acceleration of your car malfunctions and applies full throttle without any input from the driver, that could definitely lead to a catastrophic event. In case of smartphone, PC or server-side applications, this is mostly not the case. If Spotify fails to play you a song or if a flight booking app doesn't manage to book you the flights you actually want, nobody's going to get harmed. Even if, for example, a server-side application controlling the smart traffic lights in your city were to fail, drivers would still be able to drive and cross intersections safely because there are alternative traffic signs mounted specifically for such cases. This is why, in most cases, embedded software has a longer validation and testing time compared to computer and smartphone apps. Real-time refers to the fact that the system must respond to input almost instantly. PCs, laptops and smartphones all have operating systems as already discussed which can't guarantee that the system will respond to a certain input in a certain amount of time. With embedded systems, the programmer sits a lot closer to the hardware which allows him to prioritize for certain tasks which also means that we can satisfy these timing constraints. Finally, software engineers nowadays have the freedom to update their apps as frequently as they wish. Every device is connected to the internet and platforms like the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store allow developers to push as many updates containing bug fixes or new features as they wish. Although embedded software engineers are starting to have this freedom too, in many cases, when devices are not connected to the internet, such as your washing machine, your coffee machine, the software that runs on these devices has to be reliable from day one until that device gets replaced. If that's not the case, the manufacturer risks large costs because of mass recalls and servicing. Anyways, I hope this video made the difference between what an embedded software engineer and a software engineer work on pretty clear. The beauty with software engineering is that there's a plethora of resources available which opens a lot of doors and allows developers to focus more on creating new features instead of on porting the software over to new platforms or micro-optimizations which would usually be necessary in embedded systems. On the other hand, with embedded software engineering, you will learn a lot about the hardware underneath and also how to write code that is as portable as possible, as safe as possible, and also as reliable as it can get. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please like the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and also check out my other videos from the Embedded Systems Explained series to learn more about embedded systems. Stay tuned for more, I'll catch up with you in the next video.